Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Faculty of Arts Welcome Day session. If you are a student entering the Faculty of Arts for fall term, you are in the right place. My name is Amber Osterman, and I do communications for the faculty. I'm going to get the session started for us today. I also want everyone to be aware that we are recording this session. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge that our, although we are together virtually, the U of M campuses are located on the original lands of the Anishinaabe, Cree, Oji Cree, Dakota and Dene peoples, and the homeland of the Métis Nation. We respect the treaties that were made on the, these territories. We acknowledge the harms and mistakes of the past, and we dedicate ourselves to move forward in partnership with indigenous communities in a spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. Thank you. I will now pass the microphone to Amy and Div, two of our four art student ambassadors who are going to be presenting the session for us today. Hi everybody, uh, welcome. I uh, hope you're having a good day. Uh, I'm so happy you guys are here. I am Div Drot Gerwal, and I'd just like to say that you have made the right choice of joining the Faculty of Arts. Uh, today we're gonna give you some basic reminders for your first year as a student at the University of Manitoba. And we'll take you through what Faculty of Arts offer to you as uh, to you students. And we'll, we'll introduce, uh, we will introduce you to some great people and going to give you some tips to help you get through your first year. Hi everyone, I'm Amy Spearman, welcome. I have some quick housekeeping items to cover. Uh, if you have a question during the session, please use the Q&A function to ask it. We will open up a time for questions at the end of the session. We often find that many questions students have are usually answered during these presentations. So please hold on to your questions to the end and we'll go through them then. Throughout the presentation, I encourage you to take a screenshot of any of the slides you'd like. We have some web addresses listed that you might like to refer to later. So feel free to take a screenshot of those. Also remember, we are recording this session and it will be available in a few days on our Faculty of Arts YouTube channel. So if you'd like to go back and refer to anything a second time, that will be a great way to do so. So what is arts all about? Well, first we can tell you that you've chosen a popular place. Arts is one of the largest faculties on campus with over 4,700 undergraduate students, about 500 graduate students and 26 different areas of study. Um, beyond the classroom, there are many other opportunities uh, things can, uh, that students can get involved in. Arts is what um, each of you is sure to find something that fits you. Um, we are. Uh, we have five uh, departments that offer co-op programs and numerous travel and exchange opportunities for when they start up again. Um, there are student groups to join, student, student government, uh, governance positions and research opportunities. Um, but before we really get into all of that, I really, I would first like to introduce you to the Dean of, um, of Faculty of Arts, uh, Dr. Jeff Taylor. Uh, welcome students. Uh, it's great to have you uh, with us uh, here uh, here today um, as you start your journey as a, as a Faculty of Arts student. Um, I was a student at the uh, University of Manitoba in the Faculty of Arts uh, many years ago. I'm uh, currently, in addition to being the, the Dean, and I've been the Dean now for, for 10 years at the University of Manitoba, I'm also a, um, a professor of history uh, specializing in, in Canadian labor history. I, I still remember my, my first day on campus. Unfortunately for you folks, you're, you're doing this, this first term remotely, but hopefully you'll be, you'll be with us in person in the winter term. But I still remember my, my, first, my first week, my first day actually, I can still remember that first day. Just all the excitement, um, the anticipation of being, of being a new student at the university and the anxieties that come along with it. Um, but it's, uh, it's still in my mind, uh, so uh, I think it'll be the same for you as you, you go on through your life. So what's involved in, in arts education? Well, in your time with us, uh, you'll be taking courses in what are traditionally referred to as the liberal arts. And the goals of a liberal arts education are to provide students with an education in the humanities and the social sciences while at the same time preparing you for a future career. 
And arts education will provide you with many things that you will then carry with, with you throughout your career and life. It will help you to broaden your mind. It'll teach you how to gather facts, interpret information, make informed decisions, think critically, and how to and help you to learn different viewpoints and how to assess those different viewpoints. Our courses are split into three primary areas, the humanities, the social sciences, and interdisciplinary studies. <clears throat> you can gain more information about all of these areas <clears throat> and, what will you, and what you'll study in them by viewing our Arts Prep Week webinar recordings we offered last week. You can go back and get the links to the videos in your student email. They are also available on our YouTube ch channel and the, the link to that is being posted for you right now in the chat function. In the sessions, our professors provided valuable insight into the introductory courses you could take, possible career paths and more. Well, on this slide, this what we study slide, you can see all of the areas we offer for, for your major or your minor. <clears throat> it's a good reminder of the many choices that are available to you. You may already have an idea of what you'd like to focus on, or you may not. Perhaps you've registered for a variety of courses from different areas to help you choose your future major, and that's okay too. Many students decide what to major in after their first year of study. You also know that your classes this term will be conducted remotely. Your fellow students are going to share some tips with you today on how to successfully navigate your way through your first term in arts. They faced remote learning last year and will be able to tell you firsthand what works and what does not. But I'd like to assure you, reassure, or reassure you that even when we are remote, you will still have access to professors and academic advisors who will be there to help guide you along the way. And you will have the opportunity to be part of activities that allow you to experience your university education in a unique way. As you know, and as I mentioned earlier, we're planning to be on campus starting in January. And we're all very much looking forward to that, I must say. If all goes well and that happens, your faculty will be there to support your transition from home to campus. In this environment, we continue to learn as we go along. And our instructors and staff are all dedicated to providing you, our students, with a top quality education and experience. At the end of your time with us, you will earn your arts degree. You will be equipped to pursue a wide variety of exciting and challenging careers in today's changing world. Arts degree holders are in demand. <clears throat> Here, we show you just a handful of occupations that may fit you and that you could do with an arts degree and some related work experience. Or you may find that you like to continue, to, you want to continue your studies. Many students start at arts and use what they learn here as the base for a specialized degree, such as law or education. Or they may go on to a master's degree or a PhD. And that's what I ended up doing, as it turned out. Uh, when I was an undergraduate, I, I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do, I had my eye on doing, uh, going into the faculty of law. And in fact, I did, I was accepted into law, but in my third year, I decided, hey, I wanna do something else. I shifted over to do a master's degree in history. Uh, then I went on and did a PhD in history and eventually came back as the Dean. Uh, so there's a variety of things that you may, you may want to do with your, your degree in arts. Throughout Welcome Day today, you'll hear from many students who will share their experiences and stories with you. I encourage you to listen to them. They were in your position not too long ago and have valuable tips to share. So good luck to all of you uh, in this, your first term. And I'll pass it back to Amy who has a poll for us. 
Thank you very much, Dean Taylor, for sharing your story and for speaking, us to, speaking to us today. Uh, it was wonderful and much appreciated. So um, Dean Taylor reminded us that there are many areas of study in the Faculty of Arts. So now we'd like to hear from you, our new students. Have you chosen a major yet? Or do you know what area you'd like to pursue? So you'll see a poll pop up on your screen now, and we'd like you to answer the question, and then we'll take a look at the results together. I'm quite excited to see what uh, our new students are studying. Okay, so I hope everyone can see uh, the results. So let's see, what is the most? I think psychology won with about 24%, but we do have pretty close sociology and criminology and a couple of people who have different areas. I fall into the different area as I study global political economy. So that's kind of cool because there are definitely a lot of other streams than just the five that we put up here today. So thank you so much for answering new students. Uh, this is wonderful. Okay, so I'm going to pass the mic to Fardeen now, who will introduce you to the Arts Student Body Council, or ASBC, as we like to call it, which is our student governance body who represents you and me, which is art students. So Fardeen, uh, please take it away. Thank you, Amy. Hello, everyone. Hope you're doing well and enjoying the first day of school. It's lovely to get this opportunity to talk to all of you. My name is Fardeen Zarif. I go by the pronouns he, him. I'm a final year student in economics, and I'm your president of the Art Student Body Council, also known as ASBC. I'm an international student from Bangladesh, and I've been in student politics my entire time in UFM, having previously served as director of media and then director for comms for University of Manitoba Bangladeshi Student Association, and as one of the comms director for ASBC last year. I'd like to talk to you today about our council. Um, ASBC is one of the largest student bodies on campus, and we represent all the students here at the Faculty of Arts by being their voice and advocating for them at the university level on matters regarding comedies, bursaries, and issues where the presence of a vocal student body is important. We provide a lot of services for students, such as lockers, wellness resources, connecting students to available opportunities, media campaigns for projects, holiday relief programs, and a plethora of academic and social events, just to name a few things. We also look after the Arts Lounge, which is usually on the second floor of Fletcher Argue, but currently being hosted virtually through our um, Discord server, which I encourage all of you to join, as it's a wonderful way to get to know your community as you begin this, as you begin to explore this wonderful journey you have set out for. Um, ASBC for me has been an amazing council to be a part of, and it has done wonders. On top of that, I also got to make lifelong friends who've been there for me in probably the hardest times of my life. and. I'll always suggest you to go for ASBC because all you need to do is be passionate and everything will work out just fine. The arts faculty itself is a beautiful community and I cannot say enough nice things about how engaging and friendly everyone is, the staff, the teachers and the students. I'm excited for what lies ahead of you and I promise you if you take your chances, there are lots of great opportunities ahead. We're all here for you and if you ever need anything, know that ASBC is dedicated to help you and will always be there to support you however you need us. I would like to thank the faculty for giving me this opportunity and thank you everyone for sharing with me your valuable time. If you ever come across me, me in campus, come say hi. I'm always available on Instagram and by email to answer any inquiries you might have. And I'm always looking to make new friends. I wish you good luck and I hope you enjoy some of the best times of your life here in the Faculty of Arts. Have a wonderful day and let us know if you have any questions. Thank you. That was amazing, Fardeen. Thank you so much for sharing. I know I'm going to miss working with you on council, but I know the council's in great hands, so we can definitely hear your passion. So thank you so much. Uh, moving on, I'd like to introduce um, the rest of our arts student ambassadors who are on this webinar here today. And so I'll go first. Uh, my name is Amy Spearman, like I said above. I use she, her, l pronouns. I'm in my third year of an advanced degree in global political economy. I come from Kadejan Sauve, which is CJS here in uh, Winnipeg. And one unique thing about me is that I currently speak four languages and I'm learning my fifth here at the U of M. So yeah, my other ambassadors, um, you can introduce yourselves. 
Um, hi, everybody. I'm Dev Jot. I'm a girl. Well, I'm in my fifth year. I'm a last year of uh, in the Faculty of Arts pursuing an advanced degree in sociology with a minor in family social sciences. Um, and I went to Fort Richmond Collegiate. I don't know if any of you guys are from there. Um, and one unique fact about me is I've lived in three different countries and I love all three of them. Hi everyone, my name is Kesh Kukulu. I use she, her, and el pronouns. I'm currently in my third years of studies. I'm pursuing an undergrad, a political studies degree, and more specifically an honors. Um, I come from Collège Uriel, located in St. Benifax here in Winnipeg, Manitoba. And something unique about me is during the pandemic, I spent my time improving my baking skills. So now I consider myself uh, good at making cupcakes and cookies. Hi everyone, my name is Kaylin Lazaro. My pronouns are she, her. I'm in my second year at the Faculty of Arts. I'm planning on majoring in criminology with a minor in family social sciences. And I actually came from St. Mary's Academy, which is here in Winnipeg. And something unique about me is that I love to collect highlighters and pens. Hey everyone, I'm Alex. My pronouns are he, him and I'm going into my third year in the Faculty of Arts. I'm doing a double honors major in English and Linguistics. And I moved to Winnipeg after I finished high school in the States. And one unique thing about me is that I've never lived in one place longer than five years. Thanks so much for sharing that, Alex and everyone. Um, my name is Lada and I use she, her pronouns. I'm currently going into my fourth year of studies, which is very exciting. I'm doing a double honors degree in linguistics and English, just like Alex. And I'm an international student from Ukraine. And a fun fact I would like to share with you all is that I have been to 12 countries. Uh, so right now, let's do a poll. Um, the poll is called, where am I? And that's a chance for us to learn a little bit more about you. Uh, since we're uh, not on campus right now, we want to know where you're gonna be studying uh, this term. So please answer the question. I'm very excited to hear where all of you are. I am currently on campus, so that's fun. All right, um, just gonna wait a little more. Okay, I hope you can all see it. So most of you are in Winnipeg right now. So that's fun, just like me, uh, amazing. Uh, there are people who are in Manitoba, but outside of Winnipeg, uh, nice. And uh, next, 14%, uh, uh, 21 of you are outside of Canada. So that's really cool. And there are some of you who are in Canada, but not in Manitoba. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing that with us. And now we're going to talk about what to expect when classes start. Uh, so what will this look like? And I, of course, will pass this over to Div. Um, well, the first thing I would like to talk about or is a kind of reality check is that uh, you're you're guaranteed not in high school anymore. You're not, you're 100% in control of your time. No one's monitoring you or sending updates to your parents. Your time management is up to you. You'll need, uh, you'll need to plan out your time, plan your classes in advance, plan your degree. There is There are people who can help you, but it, you must initiate it. With, and a stark reality, that many students are not ready for is, a deadline is a deadline. Um, there are people who can help, uh, uh, sorry, uh, here in university, there's no extensions, no changes, but just hand in your stuff on time. Uh, we're, we're already showing you that programs we have to study, study here. You, you have so many options for what you can take. It's actually crazy. 
Uh, there's so there are plenty of student groups, trips, and theater programs, le learn a language programs, um, student conferences, student contests, volunteer opportunity options, opportunities, and even student um, job opportunities. Uh, you just have to open. Uh, you just have you just have to be open to take the advantage of them. Uh, your experience at school it, this term is going to look more like the photo on on left rather than one on right. Uh, we hope you'll be back on campus soon, but in the meanwhile, we'll have some tips to share to help you get through this term. First on our tips for success is advanced preparation. So here at university, it's so important that you use the syllabus. So the syllabus is essentially your course outline. It tells you everything about the course, important dates and deadlines, but it also has very important information regarding your professor's email and how to reach out to your professor and um, times that you can go to um, regular office hours. So it's a very useful document that gives you a good overview of how your semester will unfold in specific classes. So with the syllabus, the next tip, tips goes hand in hand. Mark down deadline dates. I cannot emphasize this point. It's so important to mark down deadline dates. By doing so, you give yourself a good perspective of how your semester will unfold. Maybe you'll have weeks that are more busy than other weeks. So that tells you that, hey, this week, maybe I need to move around my schedule to give me enough time to complete the assignments. And that goes directly into my third point, which is complete all assigned readings and chapters. I know for my degree, I have so much reading, it can be so tempting to skip a reading, but it's so important to do all the assigned readings and read all the chapters because it gives you a really good understanding of what the professor will um, go over in class. And it's also good additional resources to have a greater understanding of the material that you are um, learning. Another tip for success is the attentive participation tip. And so there's a couple of things that fall under this category, but notably there's taking notes even during virtual class. This might seem like a bit of a no brainer, but these notes need to be not what the, every single sentence that the prop is saying, but specific bullet points. And as you uh, take more courses and get more used to an online format, you'll understand kind of what is more important to note down. And so that just takes practice, but I promise you'll get good at it. My second little uh, point is to turn off your phone or other devices and to focus on your online class only. This is really, really important as it is only through that attentive participation that you're going to be able to absorb that material and that knowledge. And my last point is to earn your participation marks. More and more, uh, more and more so in online learning, professors are adding uh, little participation marks to their courses. So this could take the form of maybe a poll, um, kind of like we're using here, uh, to test your knowledge on the material being taught. And so if you're in court, if you're in class listening, you're going to be able to earn those participation marks. And that's a great way to boost your mark. Um, so the next tip for success is active review. Uh, it is very important to actively review all the materials that you learn in class because uh, there's so much information that you're given in a, in one lecture that it's important to go back and review what you learned. So the first first tip I would say is ask questions. Ask questions to your professors. Uh, they're there for you. They're there to help you out. Even your TAs that you might you might have for your uh, classes. They're there for you. Um, you make make a good use of that. Um, uh, either email them if you don't feel comfortable during class or raise up your hand and ask questions at, and during the class or even after. Um, a lot of professors do give you time to uh, reach out to them uh, and ask questions. And the next one is to go back and fill in your notes um, from the lecture or rewrite your notes. I think one thing that works for me that I always like to do is go in, in and rewrite my notes that I took in lecture. I think that really helps me uh, look back at the information, look at stuff that might not be as important that I noted down during class time and kind of revise it, look in my textbook, add notes from that too. And it just helps me create much better notes that are more useful when I'm trying to study for a test. And the last one I would say is self-test. Uh, I, I think with a lot of classes, um, it's good to just go back and see what information you know. Uh, if you're understanding all the information, ask yourself the main questions that are being asked, look at your learning ob uh, objectives, they're very helpful. You can see if you're able to answer, uh, able to um, relay any of the information that's related to that learning ob objective and see if you're uh, 
if you can uh, if you're able to answer any of those questions properly so that you know when you're going into writing a short answer or essay uh, you're well prepared and you're going to be able to write uh, write the test to the best of your ability and finally uh begin now it is very important to attend classes even though they're virtual they're just as important as in-person classes have been be on time make sure you're there uh, so you can account for like any hiccups with technology be sure to be present and have your camera on and also uh, be on like come to class even though if uh, even though there might be like online recordings of it uh, because it is very important to show your professor that you actually care and to participate uh, get those participation marks like amy said and uh, also there might be uh, attendance that is taken during class. Uh, so it is very important to be there. Um, next tip is to begin assignments early. I know it can be tempting to leave everything to the very last minute, but that is not something I would recommend doing at all, as it can be quite overwhelming to like study for a test that has 10 chapters and review them all in one night that can be very daunting and maybe you're gonna be able to succeed, but at what cost? You're just gonna be so stressed out during the exam. So that's super important to just record all your deadlines, check your syllabus to make sure that you know what those deadlines are. If you have any questions about deadlines, talk to your professor, just yeah, make sure to plan because planning is super important. And that leads me to my next point, which is creating a study schedule. And um, now we're just gonna talk about what a study schedule could look like. Uh, so there is one that the Academic Learning Center has kindly provided. Uh, so it is very important to schedule in all your classes, work, and things like leisure time, time with your friends, family, and even time during which you're gonna be sleeping because that's very important. Also be sure to schedule in self-care time because um, you know university can be stressful and it is very important to make sure to take care of your well-being. Just put everything in and also remember to uh, schedule study time. This is the time that you're not in class, but you're studying for that class. And for this, it's very important to remember the two to one study ratio. And that means that for every one hour that you're in class, it is recommended to study for two hours independently. Yeah, it can seem like a lot, but it works. It is effective and it is ultimately what the plan is for a uh, of your professor uh, to make sure that, uh, you know, all the material that is taught to you in class is retained really well. Uh, so be sure to, uh, yeah, use this plan or use your own plan, just schedule everything in, build a schedule that works for you. And uh, just remember that you might have a lot of commitments like, you know, uh, jobs, volunteer postings, uh, like different things that are going on in your life. Um, and like, of course, don't forget about the fun stuff, but ultimately, first and foremost, you're a student. So be sure to, uh, yeah, just schedule in time for classes and studying so you don't miss those. And now it's a poll time. Thank you, Zlata, for sharing that. Um, we're gonna do a poll this time about break time because it's very important to have a schedule and it's actually super important to also schedule in break time. So we want to know what sort of things do you like to do on your break? Uh, you can answer this question on your screen now and we'll collectively take a look at the results. Fun fact, did you know that taking breaks actually increases the amount of material that you can learn? So taking breaks is actually good for studying and for absorbing material. Fun fact. <laughs> Just sorry guys, we're having a, I'm having a technical issue with the poll. It's failing to launch. So we'll try it again uh, in a bit. If I can get it going, um, we'll, uh, we'll throw the poll up in a little bit, but otherwise we're gonna go on to the next slide right now. For sure, no worries. So all arts courses will be taught by remote learning this term. 
Remote learning courses are all accessible through the University of Manitoba's learning management system called UM Learn. You should be receiving an email from your arts instructors providing you with a Zoom or WebEx link for your very first class in each subject. If you haven't, you can also look in UM Learn in the course overview section for each class. To prepare for classes, we encourage you to prep your work area. Get your headphones, webcam, and computer ready. Have a space where you can spread out your textbook, reading, computer, and of course, have a writing space. You should expect a mix of live classes, recorded lectures, and some supplementary videos and, read and readings. Testing will also be online. So this can include multiple choice, calculations, short answer, and essays. Essentially all things that you would be tested on on paper. Your instructor will be providing all the information in advance so you are ready and prepared. Each year on Welcome Day, we encourage students to get to know their instructors. Visits during office hours, talk after class. Although it is remote this term, it is totally still possible to do those things. There will still be office hours and ways to connect with your instructor when you have questions. Be warned, they won't, they won't be answering a direct message at 2 a.m., but they are there to support you during regular office times. Speaking of which, ask questions early. Do not wait until the day before the exam. That's way too late. Make sure you connect with fellow students and teaching assistants too so that you have a broad network of people to get answers from. You'll find that your instructors have varying levels of comfort with technology. Some will use tools more than others, and that's completely okay. The important part is not how flashy it is, but that you're able to get the info that you need to learn the material. And remember, don't use your personal email address like Gmail or Hotmail. You must use your myumanitoba.ca email address. If you do end up using a personal email, you'll likely not be getting a response. So it's very important to use the email provided by the university to communicate with professors and university staff. It is equally important to check this email at least a few times per week for info on deadlines and important announcements from the university and the faculty of arts, including, from your, including your instructors. I personally check it twice a day in the morning and afternoon, just in case a professor sends an update on a class or something. So with that said, another important aspect is that everyone needs support. Some you build yourself and some are available through the University of Manitoba. Many UM supports have adapted so that they can still be accessed even though we're not on campus. Connect with your classmates by building or, or joining an online study group. Join a student group to meet new people. Volunteer for a committee or service group. Talk to your family or roommates about being supportive and quiet while you are in class or studying. The Academic Learning Center has online workshops, tutors, and more to help you get through your studies. We'll tell you more about them on the next slide. Don't be afraid to use their services. U of M also offers counseling, spiritual health and mental health services. We're putting a link in the student support. We're putting a link to the student support webpage in the chat now. Talking of support. So aside from being a, you know, an ambassador with the Faculty of Arts, I'm also this year's accessibility representative with the Arts Student Body Council. And I'm proud to announce that the Arts Student Body Council has teamed up with the Faculty of Arts to share a material, to share a mental health resource guide for students. We've heard from students over the past year that it can be hard to find resources and to know which one is right for their situation. So we've put together a quick guide with the most common resources for you. You can scan the QR code on the screen now so you can easily get to the guide from your phone. In the next few days, you should also be receiving an email from the Arts Student Body Council with this full list of supports and the QR code in case you don't get it here today. There are so many people wanting to help you here at the University of Manitoba and in the Faculty of Arts. So if you need help, please reach out and you'll find someone who can connect you to the right person for each question or need that you have. And I cannot emphasize this point, there are so many people here that are ready to help you for any of your needs. So it's so important to make sure to reach out if you do need um, additional help. Thank you so much for emphasizing that point about support. It is so important. And yes, there are so many people here to help new students. And so that's a really great point. Okay, we're going to move on to talk about the Academic Learning Center or ALC. And before I get into it, I want to share a super quick kind of funny anecdote. I had a friend once tell me that they were gonna meet me at the ALC 
And I thought that meant Academic Learning Center, but it actually shares an acronym with the Active Living Center, which is the name of the gym at the U of M. So just don't get those two crossed. But anyway, I just thought that was funny. So the Academic Learning Center provides a number of different supports and services to U of M students. They offer over 100 workshops each year for students, and many of these are specifically tailored for new students, so for you all. The ALC's most popular service, however, is one-to-one -one tutoring for writing, study skills, and content in select courses like Psych, AMP, Soch, Stats, or Math. The ALC has identified some of the historically toughest classes on campus and offers free, emphasize free, weekly review sessions for them. These are sometimes offered for classes like STAT 1000 or Econ 1010 and 1020, which are courses you may become familiar with. They are called supplementary instruction sessions, and these voluntary sessions offer students an opportunity to ask questions about the courses, compare notes, discuss course content and ask questions, and even solve some practice problems. Students who attend these supplementary instruction sessions say that they get a better understanding of course content, they sometimes get a better grade and they might also learn some useful study strategies for future courses. So if this supplementary instruction is offered for one of your courses, your instructor may let you know, but you can always check the ALC webpage, which is something that I highly recommend that you do. For those who prefer to get their own help kind of on their own, the ALC website has tip sheets and videos that are absolutely amazing. They include everything um, from stuff like how to create an outline, how to develop a strong thesis, how to paraphrase, and they have links for citation guides. And for me personally, I know when I first started university, I thought I knew how to cite for MLA in Chicago, and I thought I was all good. But as it turned out on my very first essay, I had some issues with trying to figure out how to properly cite. So I went to the Academic Learning Center and that helped uh, immensely, like absolutely immensely. So I personally love the Academic Learning Center. I highly recommend students to check it out. And they also have stuff about tips about how to write essays or how to write exams online. Because some of you may not have written an exam for the last two years because of COVID-19. So don't let university exams be a surprise or a shock. You can be prepared and the Academic Learning Center is a great way for you to be able to gain and get some of those skills to write a proper exam. And if you're also new to the English language, they have supports and resources for that too. So you might also be sitting here thinking, okay, I've heard everything you said about the Academic Learning Center, but I'm a top student. I don't really need study skills or writing help, or I know how to cite. But I can tell you that almost all of the ambassadors sitting here today have used the Academic Learning Center at some point, and we've all benefited from these services. So why wouldn't you want to kind of up your grade a little bit more, even if it's already a pretty great grade? So I highly recommend using the Academic Learning Center when you can. And the last thing I'll mention about the ALC is something called online writing tutoring. So online writing tutoring is another popular service where with about 70 submissions, I believe, per month, where a tutor can review your paper before you hand it in. So even if you think you're, you've got an amazing paper, you can submit it to these online writing tutors and they'll give you actually some suggestions on how to improve your paper and get an even better mark. So who wouldn't want to get an even better mark? So that's a great um, resource as well. And we'll put a link to the Academic Learning Center homepage in the chat now. Uh, thank you, Amy, for that. Um, for uh, So I'd like to continue on after all of the information that I've been given. If you still have, um, sorry. Um, if you still have any questions that you can't find on to, you can connect with academic advisors, uh, arts academic advisors. Um, advisors can help with things like degree planning, picking a major, and also co-curricular activity. Um, email or call the number on your screen. You can also connect with academic advisors using our online chat. The link is being placed in the chat now. Quick questions will be responded by, by chat or will, uh, will be followed up by email. The, if the question is more complicated, the advisor will book an appointment uh, with you to come further. Uh, there are so many rules and procedures at the universities. If there is something that you don't uh, understand, don't guess it, uh, please come and ask. Uh, they'll also connect you to other activities uh, and resources on campus to, that can help. Um, I have used... Uh, 
academic advisor uh, throughout my five years at the university, especially in this past year, uh, coming close to graduation, I really want to make sure that I have all my required courses uh, uh, for being this uh, a spring. Uh, so it's very important to make sure that uh, you see them so that help you and tell you if you're on 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 part with your degree uh connecting with uh, also connecting with an advisor is voluntary uh, it's up to you to ask questions and to stay on top of your degree throughout your degree uh, and i'll pass on to zolada to continue on thank you so much dev so now let's talk about opportunities beyond the classroom i just uh want to emphasize the point that even though studying within the classroom is very important and uh, it is what people usually think when they talk about university, the U of M offers so many wonderful opportunities beyond the classroom that I urge you all to check out and hopefully make use of. Uh, so the first one that is out there is the travel study program. And uh, there are travel study programs at over 40 countries around the world. And uh, this way you can go and study for there for a term or more. Unfortunately, this program is currently on hold due to the pandemic, but as your first year students, it is very likely that you're gonna be back to in-person classes and hopefully you're gonna be able to, uh, if you're interested, um, yeah, go on travel exchange. Uh, next, we have what we call uh, field study classes in arts. And what this means is that the main part of your class takes place outside of a classroom. So, apologies, I am currently in residence, so there's a lot like, of testing. So I'm going to pause for a second. Okay, I think they're done. So sorry about that. Uh, so this way you can go to a community garden or a cooking lab or like the U of M libraries. There are so many courses like this and uh, a lot of them actually happen during the summer term. Again, please watch out for uh, watch for these type of classes in future terms. Um, yeah, especially the summer term as it's going to come up. Um, so that's very exciting. Also, uh, there is something called experiential education. Uh, those are volunteer opportunities. So you'll hear about programs like the Alternative Reading Week or Community Service Project, or you can become an arts ambassador like us. And we also have a co-op option in arts. So this is something that you'll want to look into around the end of your first year. So if you're interested, please check out our website and make an appointment with an arts advisor. Uh, so a link is going to be placed in the chat or has already been placed in the chat to the co-op page. Yeah, it's here. And finally, something that I really want to share with you guys is the fact that you don't have to be a grad student to do research. The U of M offers what's called an undergraduate research award. Um, and that's a program that is basically like a full-time summer job uh, that is paid. And uh, basically you get to work with a professor of your choice and do research with them in the field that you want. It is amazing. You uh, get to learn so much about research and the way it works. And it's great if you want to prepare for grad school or just are interested in research as such and want to know what it's all about. Me personally, I've had the chance to hold the award twice now. Uh, so both uh, this past summer and the summer before, I got to work with my linguistics professor. And last year, we were actually able to present uh, our research at a conference and um, get a paper published. So it's super amazing. I really recommend checking it out. Uh, they usually accept applications uh, from students who are in their second year or higher. Uh, so that's definitely something to keep in mind for the future. As mentioned earlier, here at ARTS, we have plenty of student groups you can consider joining. Take a look at the slide. 
what are you interested in? So I'm currently involved, um, apart, with, apart from being an ambassador, like I mentioned earlier, I also do sit on the Arts and Body Council. Um, and like the president mentioned a bit earlier, uh, we're a group that really focuses on advocating um, for student um, and more specifically art students at various levels at the university, anywhere from you know, the Senate, um, to various um, committees, but also working with students to ensure that they have a voice here on campus and in you know, the faculty of arts. So what's so great about these various student groups is that if you wanna check them out before joining, that's okay. Most groups have social media where you can follow and learn about what they're doing um, before you join. So now it's time for us to give you some val valuable sage advice, um, also known as what would I, what would I, you know, do differently, or what, did, what, what do I wish I had known in my first year? So, if I could go back in time, put myself in your seat, and visit myself on the first day of university, what's the most important piece of advice I would give myself? Um, so I'm going to dive in and go first. So I would definitely tell myself that it's okay if things don't go according to plan. I remember I entered university, I'm like, I have this, you know, four year plan, five, five courses, you know, and then I'm out of here and then I'm on to the next. And I entered university in my first semester, you know, it was a complete disaster. I had to drop a class and, you know, I was so upset with myself. And by the end of the year, I had, even, I switched completely my degree around and went the political studies route. And although that happened, I'm so grateful for that experience because Ultimately, by dropping that class, I opened my schedule up to do more in terms of join a committee and join the student, um, the Arts Student Body Council. And through that, I've grown so much as a person, but I've also made lifelong friends that I know that we're going to be friends outside of university. For me, I also think my understanding of university also shift in my plans also shifting around in terms of university is about the education that you get here, but it is also about so much more. And university is also a place of personal growth. It's the time to live your best life in your early 20s and to take up all the opportunities that are available because university um, and your experience on university will have so many opportunities. So although my plan did not go according to plan, I think I ended up exactly where I'm supposed to be. And I'm happy that it didn't go according to plan and that it is okay if plans changes because there's so many people here on campus and so many supports ready to help you um, to navigate those changes. Thank you so much for sharing that. I love that uh, piece about how university is like a chance for you to just explore so many opportunities and get to know yourself and make connections. I can really relate to that. Um, so um, if I had to give myself a piece of advice to my first year self, it would be to get involved. In my first year, I really thought, like I went into university with the misconception that you could like either be like a really good student or you can like have, you know, um, you can have like lots of involvement like in student club and organizations and stuff like that. So like it was a choice. Um, and uh, honestly, it's not really. Um, if as long as you learn how to manage your time and uh, make sure to prioritize things and not take too many things on at once, uh, being involved in many volunteer opportunities and uh, student councils and student clubs is not only a great way for you to make friends and build those important connections at university, but it's also a great way to just learn some very applicable skills. They're transferable both to your univers university studies and your future career. So definitely check out all the opportunities that are out there uh, in the Faculty of Arts and just generally at university. I think you will not regret it. Man, all of your advice is so inspirational. So I'm gonna go with something that's more practical because I can't top those two. Um, my piece of advice is check your emails frequently. There is so much great information that comes through uni your university email. And I'm not just talking about stuff like the link to your course, because that's kind of important, but I mean other stuff. Like there's the My Umzu news that every student will receive. And it's an email that pretty much details stuff that's going on. Um, well, I guess not on campus this year, but stuff that's going on 
in the university community. So you can access a lot of cool things online. And so just read your emails. It doesn't take very long if you stay up to date on them, but I promise you'll find a lot of cool things through your emails. I totally agree with what Amy said. You should definitely check your emails. But the thing that I think is one of the most important things to me personally is to take care of your mental health and physical well-being. That's the thing I would tell my first year self. Just because for me, my first year looked completely different to what I was expecting. With school being online, it makes it so easy for us to just stay at a screen all day without taking breaks, which can be mentally draining. You have to make sure you take breaks and get outside. During your first year, you're going to be exposed to so many new things and so many experiences that it'll be very easy for us to overstress ourselves. Your mental health is essential to academic success and your health comes first. Uh, I think all the other um, masters gave great um, advice and I'd like to add on to that. I think, uh, it's um, it's important to seek out opportunities. Don't be afraid to hold back um, if you find something interesting. See that oh, this um, uh, opportunity is amazing. You are in, you think you're um, will happy doing it, or you know it'll get give you a lot more skills. Um, like it like you don't first year mean that you can't uh, seek out all these opportunities. Get involved. Um, and I think I just want to on to everybody, just get involved. I think once you get involved in campus, as you see, um, it, it allows you to find community you belong and trust to you and um, just enjoy doing the same thing. And I think you experience much better than just going to school to study alone. Div, hang um, on before we continue. So Hang on, Div, before we continue, we're just going to get Alex in here so he can add his advice in. Um, and then after Alex does his advice, um, we will go, we, I'm going to try again for the activities poll, okay? So that'll be their next two things. Go ahead, Alex. All right, so for my first year self, I think the main thing that I wish I could go back and tell myself would be to um, take advantage of the resources that are there for us especially for students who are struggling, because that's definitely a common thing for first year students to feel overwhelmed or struggle with their, with their mental health. And yeah, I wish I had um, reached out maybe to the Student Counseling Center earlier in my first year and talked to my profs about what I was going to uh, going through because um, during my second semester, I was kind of struggling a little bit and I put it off for a couple of weeks and tried to just focus on school, but it just made my school that much harder to do. So that's definitely what I would emphasize for my first year self and for anybody else who um, is struggling during their first year, feeling overwhelmed to reach out. And there's plenty of resources for students. <clears throat> Thanks, Alex. Okay, we're Amy, we're gonna try and launch this poll again uh, about activities. We'll see if it works this time. Amazing. Yes, this go. is like my favorite poll ever. And as Kaylin had mentioned, taking breaks and doing stuff that is outside of kind of school is going to help you in school and it's super important. So I want to hear from you guys. What activities will you incorporate into your schedule to take breaks from studying? I'm really excited to see which one wins on this one. <laughs> they all look so good, right? I wish panelists could vote because I'm sure we all have our own. We could debate about this probably for, for days. Okay, and the votes are in. Okay, so take a walk or jog or exercise is the winner. And that's a great one, that's fantastic. But I love how we got almost a three-way tie for watch Netflix, Snapchat or talk online with my friends and take a nap. I feel like you could do almost all three of those in like, kind of the same time. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing everyone. That's awesome. Um, so I'd like to now go into uh, some important reminders. Um, the Faculty of Arts webpage are 
web pages are where you'll find more information about specific departments and programs and their contact infos. Or when you're ready to contact an academic advisor but can't remember the email to use, it's here on the Students Experience page. Or if you're ready, if you're ready to look into applying for a travel program or co-op programs, uh, or want to see what scholarships are available for you, page to get more information. Um, as you plan your course schedule for the years, please be reminded that new students who are entering the Faculty of Arts in fall 2021 must include at least three credit of Indigenous course content at some point during their degree in order to graduate with the Bachelors of Arts. You may complete the course requirement at any time throughout uh, your degree. You do not have to take it the course, uh, do not have to take the course requirement first year. It is recommended to complete the requirement in the early stages of your degree. Um, you do not have to take the course um, a degree to avoid dis uh, discipline of full classes or your preferred course, uh, course choice not being offered in a particular term. The new requirement aims to provide art students with understanding of place of indigenous people in Manhattan and will provide our future graduates uh, with more tools to understand how the history is to many aspects of contemporary society, including our future uh, workplaces. It is, it is in response to the goal of Uritoba's strat strategic plan that plans to um, plans for every student to graduate basic understanding of importance and contribution of indigenous people in Manitoba and Canada. On the contest of courses that fulfill this requirement, we recommend you check the Eklund regularly so more courses will be added to the as more courses will be added to the list over time. You're also going to want to follow us on social media to start getting to know your faculty. You can follow us now or take a screenshot of the slide so you can go back to it later. During the term, we'll be posting highlights about the Faculty of Arts. We'll tell you about the amazing research being conducted by professors and students and let you know about any student research opportunities. We'll share posts about writing workshops, contests, talks by employers or alumni, and even job opportunities for students. We post tips at key times of the year, like exam time and during career month. We share the stories of current students and alumni to help give you ideas on what major to choose, career choices, and much more. And we always use social media to remind you of key dates like deadlines to drop or add courses. There's always something new in the Faculty of Arts to tell you about. Now let's go to a poll. Now we'd like to ask you how you prefer to get the information about the new, about, about and use from your faculty. Please answer the question on the screen now and we'll take a look at the results. Okay, the results are in. So wow, most people actually said you have Manitoba email. So that's actually also my preferred choice and how I like to get my news. But last year I actually added on um, the Faculty of Arts Instagram and that has been really helpful because sometimes when things get chaotic and you have 10, 15 emails, you know, sometimes you kind of, it's hard to kind of cipher through all the emails. So Instagram has also helped, but it's good to know that um, everyone uses a variety of ways and there's no right or wrong way um, to get your information here um, at the University of Manitoba and in the Faculty of Arts more specifically. Okay. You have no idea how happy I am that folks are wanting to get information through email. So anyway, that just makes my day. Um, that's great. Okay, so we are nearing the end of our presentation, but there's a couple more things I wanna share with you all. So UM Commons. UM Commons is UM's online hub for all things first year. You'll find information on how to get your student ID card online, links to the Academic Learning Center, right, the ALC, uh, tutors, career services, libraries, student communities and clubs page, literally it's got it all. 
So you might also be looking to meet other maybe Indigenous students or 2SLGBTQ students, or maybe you want to know more about supports for international students. Whatever it is, UM Commons is a great place to start looking. You'll also find lists of academic clubs, health and wellness clubs, social justice and community service clubs, sports and recreation clubs. I think you guys get the point. Um, there are over 100 clubs listed on this page and they keep adding more, so it's a fantastic resource. On UM Commons, you can also connect with a peer mentor and get support for learning remotely, which is always a great thing. And as a first year student, UM Commons was built just for you, so we encourage you to take some time and check it out. A link to the UM Commons page has, I think, already been added, so that's wonderful. My next thing I want to share is some valuable UM apps. Uh, this is actually a new addition to our presentation, and so if there's one thing that you take away, and literally everyone listening right now, wake up, this is super important, the UManitoba mobile app. It's the first one in that little picture. Uh, download it right now. Get out your phones and download it. It is an incredible app. It has everything from finding your, um, your book list. It has your course schedule. It will tell you when your exams are. It will tell you your final grades eventually, which are all gonna be amazing because you're all great students. Um, it has campus maps, links to your email. So it's literally the one-stop shop for everything that you need. So that's the UManitoba mobile app. Download it now. <laughs> I sound like an infomercial. Um, other apps that are really useful are the UM Recreation app. And so that's an app for the UM gym, uh, which is the Active Living Center, the ALC, as we touched on already. So this is a great app to find out what sort of fitness services and classes are offered. And it also has a link to where you can book a workout because during COVID, uh, our new regulation is that you have to book a workout slot before going in so that the gym can regulate the numbers. So remember to do that. Uh, the third app is UM Safe, which is a super simple app. Uh, it just has campus security phone numbers and some safety resources. Uh, it's a really simple app. Yeah, great for resident students or international students or anyone who does eventually end up on campus. And the last app is UM Libraries. I personally haven't used this app yet, but I know as I maybe get further into my degree or grad studies, I might want to be able to check out books uh, on my own. And that's what this app does is it, you can scan a book and then it can check it out into your account all on your own. So if you're pressed for time, that's a pretty cool app to use. So some links to the apps uh, are being added to the chat or may have already been added. Okay, uh, lastly, um, I want to emphasize this slide right here. So at the University of Manitoba, we want to build a safe and inclusive campus community where students, professors, and staff are treated with respect, can feel safe from the threat of violence, and will be supported if they need it. Much of this has to do with the way we conduct ourselves and treat each other. So there's a series of five online modules on sexual violence accessible in UM Learn, covering topics such as a discussion of consent, power dynamics, and conflicts of interest, busting common myths about sexual violence, and an introduction to all of the U of M sexual violence supports, including the U of M Sexual Violence Resource Center, which is a great resource center, and which is open for services by phone and email during the campus closure. Uh, there are amazing people who work there, so please reach out if you need. A link to the Sexual Violence Support and Education webpage is being added in the chat now. So I ask that you all please work with us to make our university safe and inclusive for all, even during remote learning. And so, as you can see on the screen, this brings us to the end of our welcome session and hopefully the end goal of your journey here. So this picture shows what the end will hopefully look like and hopefully, yes, you'll be able to gather just like this picture. Um, and it might be in three, four, or even five or six years from now, but we know that the journey is going to be an incredible one. We welcome you again to the Faculty of Arts. Uh, you're gonna make the most of your time here, I know it. And uh, we really hope you love it here as much as we all do. So thanks so much for um, joining our session today. And uh, if you have any questions, we will be answering those now. So please ask away. So I'm gonna remind everybody, thanks Amy, to please use the Q&A function to type in your question. We do have some questions in there already and we'll be tackling those uh, right away. 
So as questions start to come in, I want to remind everyone that all of our presenters are going to focus on answering questions from around today's se session topic related to the Faculty of Arts and different services available in the Faculty of Arts, primarily because that, of course, is our area of expertise. If you have questions that pertain to areas outside of that, we recommend you use the um, search function on umanitoba.ca. So the main Umanitoba website has everything that you need, including services and pages like UM Commons that Amy talked about already, um, the Faculty of Arts home pages and web pages, um, the Registrar's Office, Admissions, the International Center. There's a lot of different pages in there. And using the search function on umanitobus.ca is the best way to be able to type in your question and take a look. You can also use the Ask Umanitoba button that's on the website, where you could directly type in your question and you can receive an online response. So even um, things related to the first year center, student life, et cetera, there's areas for each of your questions. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna triage some of these questions and we're gonna try and get through them. Um, so we encourage you to stay on the line um, because you will get some valuable information out of that. So um, the first, one of the first questions is, um, and we actually had this quite a few times, is how do you declare a major or minor after classes start? Um, when and how can you do that? And there's really no time limit as to when you can declare a major. Um, you, uh, you're not required to declare it in your first term. As we've mentioned, you can take a variety of classes first if you're not quite sure what area of study um, that you want to pursue as a major or a minor. Um, so you have time definitely to do that. If you do know, you'll be able to go in throughout the term uh, and, uh, and to be able to declare your major. Um, and, uh, and do that and list it in there. Um, it is encouraged that you do it, if you have an idea by the end of your first year, go ahead and do that. If you're not sure, I can let you know that in the winter term, so after uh, the, uh, the holiday break, after the Christmas holiday break, uh, we will be offering for the Faculty of Arts more information um, on all of our different areas of study to help people and help students Take a look at, learn more about the different majors that we offer, learn more about the things you study in those areas, um, the potential careers that are available in those areas after graduation, and maybe that will help you to decide along with some of the first year classes that you take as to what you might like to pursue in the future. So there's no rush to declare your major. Um, take your time and don't worry about that right now. Um, so there's a question that says, how can I get in touch with um, students, other students in the that are pursuing the studies that I'm pursuing. So the sp specific question said pre master students from English theater, film and media department. But we also got other questions that just said, hey, how do I connect with students in my classes? So I'm going to handle the first part of that. And then I'm going to pass that on um, to um, uh, one of our ambassadors to talk about connecting with students in your classes. So let's talk about that. So first, if you have a very specific group for your department or your major area of study, um, you probably will find out more information about that um, as the as the year starts and as the term starts. So for example, if you're in a pre-master's program, um, you'll likely get information through your professors, or also you could get an email from your department. Um, that happens a lot when, if you decide to take an honors degree, when you start that honors program, the department or area of study will reach out to you and get everybody connected and do those kinds of things. So if you don't have that and you'd like to reach out yourself, you can certainly do that by connecting with the department itself, and you can find each department's web pages uh, on umanitoba.ca slash arts. Okay, so that's the general response. Now I'll pass it to see if one of our ambassadors wants to tackle. Um, what's the best way to get connected with students that are in your class? Uh, in, and if you want to have chats and things within your classes um, or within your area of study. So who'd like to handle that one first? If anybody has a Put your hand up or or unmute yourself. Salada? There are a lot of volunteers for that one, but <laughs> there. Um, so I would recommend uh, joining a group chat, uh, a Telegram group chat or a WhatsApp group chat if someone sends out an email from your class. Uh, that's a great way to talk to students um, within that class and uh, uh, just yeah, be reminded of deadlines and like share your experiences. Uh, but 
know your limitations, like don't go in that group chat if um, you're in the middle of an exam or don't uh, ask questions pertaining to like answers to co course content rather than general like course content. So you know where to draw the line there. Um, also there are opportunities to um, talk to students within classes. If your professor, for instance, decides to use breakout rooms for discussions, that's a great way to like share your opinions and thoughts on um, the class topic. Um, and um, if you want to reach out to a particular student in that class, you can do so by going on UM Learn and uh, um, going to uh, the members of that class um, and uh, shooting them a quick email. Uh, yeah. So these are all good ways to talk to students. Um, unfortunately, uh, as we're virtual, it's more difficult uh, to talk to students in your classes because like if we were in person, you'd probably get a chance to talk to them right before class or after class. But um, being virtual encouraged like a lot of students to create group chats for classes. So if there's not a group chat in your class, uh, feel free to you know create one. I've done that and it's been, um, yeah, a great experience. So, yeah. If um, so, I'm going to ask the students, ask you guys. Um, I've heard that Telegram is one of the most popular um, kind of apps that folks are using to create those uh, group chats in classes. Is that, I, I saw Amy gave a thumbs up. And usually uh, the way that it works, um, my understanding is that one of the students in the class will initiate it, send something out through UM Learn. Um, that you can then uh, click on to join uh, for that class. Is that, does that make sense, Amy? Or they'll often send it by email to your oh, there you go. email, <laughs> your emails, yeah. Perfect, perfect. Okay, great, um, thanks for that. Um, so we had a couple questions come in because we talked a little bit about participation um, and uh, being really active in your classes. Um, and a couple of students had some questions about cameras uh, in class. And some that say maybe they don't have a webcam because uh, they haven't been able to purchase one yet uh, to be able to, um, to add to their to add to their computer setup, um, or they're wanting to know are cameras required in classes. So, um, Kaylin, uh, I'm going to maybe ask you if you want to tackle that one for us. Uh, Kaylin hasn't had any in-person classes yet because uh, she's a second year student, um, so definitely knows about uh, remote classes and the challenges around with those. Can you talk to us a little bit, Kaylin, about your experience last year? Did you have professors who, did some professors require cameras to be on? Did some say it was okay to have it off or on? Um, and if you don't have a, a camera, talk to us about ways that you can still participate um, and make sure that you can still get those marks. For me, um, the classes that I was in actually, none of my professors really required your camera on. I know most um, will want it on during exams and things, but that's just to monitor. But other than that, um, it's just nice to have your camera on sometimes for your professors because I had a professor who was kind of sad because he felt like he was talking to a blank wall. So a few people had their cameras on like that, but it's really just dependent on your professor. You can always double check with them if they prefer or if they want it on. But for the majority, it's usually just if you wanna have it on, have it on. And for those without a webcam, I know you can always email the professor and just let them know, like, I don't have a webcam, like how am I gonna get my, let's say if they have participation marks or something, you can always use the chat option to say like, I'm here, like, don't worry, I'm not asleep. I just don't have a webcam. <laughs> Excellent, thanks very much, Kaylin. Uh, I really appreciate that. Um, the next question or group of questions that we had that we'll tackle is um, some students are saying that they haven't received any emails from their professors yet uh, about with links to their to UM Learn or links on how to join their classes. And with classes, some classes starting tomorrow, um, I can understand that some people are a little bit anxious about that. Um, so maybe with the experience of doing this for a couple of terms, uh, one of our ambassadors can, uh, you guys can maybe give some suggestions on how to handle that and what people should be watching, what students should be watching for uh, to, uh, to make sure that they're connecting with their classes. Who'd like to tackle that one? 
Klesh, go ahead. Yeah, so, and so, okay. So today, typically courses, I think class are set to start tomorrow. So your UM Learn portal will actually open at midnight tonight. So you, at this moment, it makes sense if you don't have access to some of that. So tomorrow morning, maybe wake up an hour earlier to check that your portal. And typically professors do have the syllabus in there and the syllabus will have your Zoom link if you don't have it. Um, by waking up an, an hour earlier tomorrow, it also gives you time to email the professor that, hey, I don't have access to this. How do I you know, join um, um, the class? Typically the first class is not to not stress too, too much. A lot of times it's just going over the syllabus, which you are more than able to do on your own. So don't stress too, too much if you, you don't have a link um, because over the next couple of days, it should get sorted out through emails with the professor um, or even reaching out to the faculty and then you can you know get redirected. So don't stress out too much. I get it though. Like I remember my first year, I was like super nervous, but yeah, so check tomorrow morning. Your UM portal will open tonight at midnight check there for the syllabus. The syllabus will have the link. And if not, if you wake up an hour earlier tomorrow, that gives you enough time to email your professor. Maybe your professor is running late. The one thing I will just throw in there on a side note, professors are also human. And I remember when I started university, I was like, oh my God, it's my professor. I'm so, you know, I'm so nervous, but they are human. And sometimes they have life going on. Um, so it's so important to just be mindful of that too, that maybe they're running late with something or, um, you know, there's stuff happening that, it has nothing to do with you. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my, my suggestions on that. Excellent, thanks Klesh. And the last thing that I'll add to that is, um, you know, we all can have technology issues. Sometimes we can't connect. That can happen to our professors too, um, sometimes. So uh, as Klesh said, if we're all uh, patient and respectful of uh, our professors, our instructors, our fellow classmates, it'll help things to go uh, as smoothly as possible. Can I quickly um, jump in, Amber? Yeah, go ahead. All right. Um, I know today I just checked my email right before this um, webinar, and I did get one Zoom link for one of my courses through email. Uh, I think it also will be on UM Learn. So, but I also did get it in email, so you can always check there too. Excellent, thank you. And flag, flag the email so you don't lose it in your your long lists of emails. That's yeah, a good. Yeah, you can keep it there. Um, this next one I'm tossing to uh, Alex. Um, we had a question come in. Um, about uh, where people can get their student ID. So a lot of the general type of things, as I mentioned, um, those kinds of things can be found on UN Commons, but Alex looked this one up for us. So I'm gonna to toss it to Alex now to help with that one. Okay, so for, um, I know when I got my ID, like you had to go in person, but this year it's different because it's online. Um, and I will type the link to this website where it has like a step-by-step -step guide on how to do it. But um, in general, it's on Aurora under the personal information tab. Um, you just select order ID card and then follow the steps when they come up and you have to submit a photo of yourself, um, your digital signature, a copy of your government issued ID or a study permit if you're an international student and make sure your mailing address is correct and the name you prefer is correct in Aurora. And then they will mail you your ID and it says you should receive it within two weeks. And I will put the link to that in the question. Thanks, Alex. So Alex is gonna put the link to that in the chat. Um, I'm also going to be adding a link uh, in the chat just after that, because um, we had a couple of questions about dates and deadlines and where do we find that information, like when's the voluntary withdraw date, uh, deadline and um, what's the last date that I can add a class. Um, so I'm going to put a link to a very important web page that I recommend everyone um, bookmark it um, because it is uh, the university um, kind of Bible uh, and is the master page for all U of M dates and deadlines like that. <clears throat> and it is the important dates and deadlines page. So it does put that for each term. Um, it will list for you uh, the, what all those deadline dates are. As mentioned previously, that's something that we always remind you of um, on our social media channels. Um, so we help to and hope to uh, catch, uh, make sure nobody gets caught off guard with those. But again, the web page is your master, and that's the one you're going to want to go to uh, for important dates and deadlines. And I'm going to pop that 
um, in the chat right now. Um, so there we go. And I do know off the top of my head that September 21st is the last day to drop a course with a refund. So if folks are listening right now, September 21st is the last day to drop to get a refund. And then November 23rd, so months later, is the voluntary withdrawal deadline. So that means that you won't get a refund for your courses, but you'll get a VW instead of whatever grade that you would have been getting in that course. So you withdraw with a VW so you don't get a grade, but you do still have to pay for the course on November 23rd. That's, yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much. So now we have a couple questions in here about um, enrolling in clubs or getting involved with ASBC um, or other student groups. And I know, um, Kalesh, you touched on that for us, uh, but maybe you can uh, just give a little bit of a summary or reminder of um, some of the best ways to, uh, Haley had already put in, in the chat, um, the link to um, UMSU's page with the listing of all student groups on campus. So not just arts ones, but everybody's in there. Um, but maybe some of the best ways to, for folks to get connected with some student groups, in particular, the arts ones. Um, I know most of them do have Instagram uh, and they are on there. We'll be sending out some information about that. We always share uh, from the student groups that are on, um, in arts. We always share a lot of the things that they're posting on our main channels. So that'll help you get connected to them. But Klesh, maybe you've got a tip saying that in their first term, uh, what's a good way for people to find out what's out there? Yeah, so I think a good way is, you know, send the Art Student Body Council an email. I know I really struggled with this my first year at university. It's easy to say get involved, but then how to get involved is another question, right? So um, send us an email and there are people in council that are working very hard to connect students, you know, to student groups that they'd like to eventually, you know, join. So please take that time to send us an email, but also like I'm on Instagram. You can totally send me a message there too. Like I, I answer student message. You can also send, you know, me an email too. So, you know, reach out to us and we will help you navigate. Um, and we will point you in the right direction. Um, so yeah, like I thought, I would say that's the best way because I can definitely understand like the website soup going on at University of Manitoba. Where there's so many like pages to visit and it can get very overwhelming. And that happened to me my first year. I was like, okay, I can't, like, it's just too many websites. I don't know where to go. So I reach out and from there, we will point you in the right direction. I think that's the best way. Also follow us on social media is another way because we post opportunities on there. The Arts and Body Council, along with the Faculty of Arts Instagram post constant opportunities on how to get involved on there as well. Um, yeah, I think that's the, 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 the best advice. I don't know if anyone else wants to add, but yeah, that, that's how I would say is a good way to kind of start. Um, to get involved on campus. Go ahead, Kaylin. I definitely, uh, definitely agree with what Klesh said. So you should definitely um, use social media to your advantage. So I'm a part of the um, Art Student Body Council as well. And how I found out about them was through Instagram. And that's actually how I found out um, about as well, how to be an arts ambassador through our Instagram. And then I went to the website. You can definitely DM the um, Art Student Body Council account as well. I'm one of the um, directors of communication, so I might be the one to answer your DM, and I'd be more than willing to help. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Uh, we had a couple of questions in here. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Dip. Uh, you want to add to that? Yeah, I just want to kind of add on to what they're saying. Like, I'm part of uh, I'm SCAS, which is the University of Manitoba Sociology and Criminology uh, Associ Association of Students, and uh, we're just trying to get everything ramped up again. But I think all of the different student groups are more than happy to uh, answer any question, find out, get, find out. Um, I mean, give you information about the group and find a position for you in the group, uh, whether that be a general member or executive position. I think we're all very happy uh, to get you involved because I think all of us want to meet people that are in a similar uh, department as you and, you know, have similar interests. And it just helps uh, create a community, sense of community, community, especially uh, remote learning and uh, remote learning and just like everything being online. I think all of them are working quite hard to make sure that they're still very present for the students 
I think they all appreciate you just got them Instagram. I think a lot of the groups up like um, the fact Instagram follow them. So you look at their followers, you can probably find them too. Or uh, ASBC, they also mentioned them. And I think, yeah, it's just great with getting involved. Excellent. Zlata, last one on this uh, topic. Yeah, I also wanted to add that a lot of STEM clubs or some councils have open events to all students so they don't have to be members. And that's just a great way uh, for you to get to know who's on the team, who is in that department, for instance. Um, and those events are usually advertised on uh, the different STEM clubs Instagram. And uh, they would be happy to see you guys there. Uh, and uh, that's just a great way to get to know people and make those connections. Excellent, thank you. Now the next group of questions that we're gonna tackle, and there was a bunch of questions in here, so I might not answer your specific question, um, but I am uh, gonna tackle this next group, which talks, um, we've had a lot of questions about specific requirements for your degree. So for example, how many credit hours in total do I need to complete my degree? Or I'd like to major in economics or history or whatever. Um, how do, Are there specific courses that I need to take to be able to do that? Um, and the answer to that is yes. Um, and the answer to the number of credits, credit hours is depends on which degree that you want to graduate with, uh, general, advanced, honors. Um, and the amount of time that it's going to take you to complete those degrees is going to depend on you and how many classes you're going to take per term. Um, but I'm just putting in the chat now uh, the link to the Bachelor of Arts Programs of Study page. Um, that's where you can find more information about each, the general degree, the advanced degree, the honors degree, um, the minor requirements for getting a minor, and you can find links to the different areas of study. Um, but as well, I am going to mention that visiting the academic calendar is your number one spot to go. Uh, don't rely on necessarily what other folks are telling you, um, unless you're talking to an arts academic advisor, um, that you should always be going to the arts academic calendar first. So if you go to the university academic calendar online, it's available online. Um, you go to the Faculty of Arts section, uh, you click on undergraduate studies, um, you will find information in there that talks about the math requirement that's required for your degree, the writing requirement, the indigenous content requirement, your humanities and social sciences requirements, tells you about what courses are required as part of your degree. And then for each area of study, like economics or history or psychology, um, you go to those sections and it will give you the guide of which courses to be taking in your first year, your second year, your third year, etc. cetera. Um, it gives you, uh, sometimes it's, you're choosing from a number of courses. You can take one of these three uh, to fulfill a requirement for a first year course or a second year course. Um, it gives you examples uh, for electives um, and other things that you need to take to complete that degree. So rather than taking anecdotal information from different people or having that conversation, you're asked to go to the academic calendar first, review that, study that, then come up with any specific questions that you have if you don't necessarily understand that info or you have some more detailed questions out of it and then contact the arts academic advisors, which we've mentioned are available by phone, by email or online chat right now um, as campus is still closed. So those are the best ways to be able to plan out your degree and make sure that you're taking the right classes. You're also gonna learn about something called UM Achieve um, as you continue on in your degree. We're not gonna worry about that one today because you've had enough things that you had to learn about today, um, but you will learn about that, which is an online tool to help you track the requirements that you're taking for your degree. Make sure that you, that you are on track. The next question that we had that came in that I'm going to ask someone to tackle um, is related to Art Student Body Council's Discord um, and how to join that. We did put the link to it in the chat earlier, um, but uh, so you can go back to that. Maybe Haley can pop that in for us again. Um, but folks, um, if anybody's having troubles, uh, maybe connecting to Discord, uh, how can they reach out to ASBC to uh, what's best to be able to uh, connect to Discord? Who wants to take that one on? Um, Kaylin, maybe? How should they contact ASBC? 
If you want to um, contact ASBC, if that link isn't working, you can send a DM to our Instagram account. I'm not too sure if it's been linked in the chat yet, and I can send you the Discord link. Or I can just type it in the chat as well. If See, you can email them, you can uh, check on Instagram. Um, the next group of questions is about, should I be buying my textbooks in advance? Do I need them for my very first day? Should I be looking at getting the online version of textbooks versus the, the printed uh, version of textbooks. Um, so if uh, maybe one or two of our ambassadors, if you guys want to give your perspective on your experience. Div? I think, uh, I don't know if you you need them for your first day of classes, because on your first day of classes, most professors are just going to be going over the syllabus. I think it's also a great time to get to know what kind of I think professors provide you quite a lot of information about if, what kind of textbook you required, if you need uh, need any other additional stuff uh, attached to it. And with regards to the print or the digital copy, I think it really just depends on what kind of learner you are. I'm more of a, I like having a solid copy, a book, textbook in front of me, so I can like go through highlight stuff and I just find it easier for me. But I know a lot of my friends prefer the convenience of an online text and you know find it easier uh, to learn. it usually tends to be a bit on the cheaper side as well uh, but again it really just depends on what kind of learner you are if you like uh, having a physical textbook I think buying it would be great like a physical copy but if you like it the can we know version um, uh, can I just jump in and quickly also add um, affordability textbook who they can get so expensive like I came back from the bookstore this morning and I like I was like I'm broke <laughs> practically at this point but what I do want to share also is my first year I managed to actually cut my textbook cost by 50 percent by checking other channels like Kijiji or Facebook groups that some students sell their books at a discounted rate also at the U of Ma at the University of Mantua bookstore like um, used books also sell at 25% less and you're not charged taxes on those books too. So it's so also important to check out those channels because you can save a ton of money um, on some of those options. And if affordability is maybe an issue in terms of those textbooks, it's so important to also contact a professor. Maybe they know like, oh, you know, you can actually use this. Maybe I, they have a discount code or something that they can share with you in terms of books because books can get so, so expensive. Um, and sometimes that presents a barrier. So make sure to check all the channels um, available to you when it comes to purchasing um, textbooks. Yeah, and the next thing I'll add is that there was a question about buying the non-required textbooks or just the required ones. And so my little tidbit on that is would be to make sure that you're asking the professor, hey, the testable materials, the material I'm gonna be tested on, is it going to be in that non-required which seems weird that it might be in there, but you just need to clarify with your professor um, what you're going to be tested on and where I'm going to be able to access that info. If it does happen to be in that non-required textbook, then yes, you should need to purchase that textbook if you want to succeed in that course, because that's where the testable material may be. But if it's not, and it's just kind of a supplementary, if you're super interested in this, I think you might enjoy this then that's up to you and that's a personal choice of if you purchase that textbook or not. But definitely communicate with your prof and ask these really important questions. Sorry, just wanted to quickly add in as well. Uh, bookstore at this time is also quite crazy. So that's just a little heads up warning to give everybody. If you are planning on going to pick up uh, uh, books in store I think just be prepared for that but I know they're also doing like uh, curb I'm not, I'm not too sure if they're still doing this but they did do curbside pickups as well which are a bit more convenient um, and also again with the used books I think that's a great way of uh, a bit environmental friendly as well and then also uh, a bit cheaper as well and uh, a lot of the times if you ask your professors if an older uh, edition is fine if you uh, it might be similar but just have a few pages that are different they tend to like 
guide you regarding that and even provide you with like page numbers that might be a bit different that you can like ask uh, your peer for if you want to just buy the older edition, which are much cheaper as well. Excellent. Thanks, everyone. OK, so we're going to close this off right away uh, for the number of for questions. Um, but I do want to um, tackle um, another uh, couple of important points. Um, we had a question earlier that says, so when I finish this whole thing and I go through this whole process, what degree do I come out with? Um, and you will be coming out with a Bachelor of Arts degree, either a general uh, an honors or an advanced degree, depending on the program that you choose. Um, and then you can choose majors, double majors in some instances, and minors as well uh, to be able to go on with that with your degree. So again, to help you with um, figuring that out, as well as some of the other questions that we're still getting in um, the Q&A box that are very specific, um, like how many credit hours are required for film studies, or what do I need to take if I want to um, pursue economics, or I'd like to do a biology minor, what's the course that I need to take in my first year? Those very specific questions. Again, I would recommend that everyone please um, check the academic calendar online. We're gonna get Haley to put a link to that academic calendar um, in the chat. Again, that's gonna to be to the basic academic calendar page. And then you can go in and search for the specific area that you're looking for um, or the Bachelor of Arts degree uh, generally. And you'll find information on the credit hours required, the required courses that you need to take, um, information on how many credits and how many courses for each area of study, whether you're doing a major or a minor, um, if it's available as an honors program or just a general program, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and again, if you have further questions after that, please connect with an arts academic advisor. Um, they are your best source to be able to answer specific questions about your degree program uh, and to make sure that you have a good understanding of what you're taking and that you're taking the right things. So I hope that that helps. Okay, um, so we're gonna cut that off. We're gonna cut off the questions there. Uh, what I wanna do is I wanna thank everyone for joining our session today um, and for sticking with us to the very ending after all of these questions. We really appreciate it. I wanna thank all of our student pre presenters and I also wanna thank Dean Taylor for joining us at the beginning. Please continue to watch your UManitoba email as Amy reminded us so many times throughout the session uh, and social media for regular information and reminders from your faculty. That's how we contact you as well as the Art Student Body Council. Um, they uh, also send emails out regularly about resources, um, opportunities for students, etc. We wish you the best of luck uh, with your classes over your very first term with us um, over the next few days and then throughout the rest of the term. I want to wish everyone a wonderful day today. Uh, best of luck for the rest of the week. Uh, and thank you so much for joining us. We all um, have had a wonderful time meeting you and we hope to meet you in person very soon. So I'm gonna give a wave and all of our presenters can give a bit of a wave. Um, thank you again, everyone. We hope the resources uh, are helpful for you and good luck and we hope to see you soon. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.